When you laser cut chrome tan leather, does it release freaky chemicals like chromium that are used in the tanning process or cyanide gas that is potentially lethal? Hi everyone, my name is Bruce from Coupe et Couture. We are a bag and wallet company here in Cape Town, South Africa. We deal mainly in leather goods and we do bespoke work. So we personalize the bag or the wallet using our laser engraving machine and we do different designs as well according to what customers want. About uh, a year ago now, December last year, we bought our laser machine from Max Laser South Africa. We're very pleased with it and we use it for all our engraving and cutting work. Um, Max Laser asked us to, to do a few videos uh, about our experience and my wife has already done one of them on a kind of a general review. And this video is a bit more targeted and talking around materials that you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, engrave or cut on the laser machine, mainly dealing with chrome tan leather. Now my wife is the one with all the talents in the, in the business. She does the sewing and the designing and I do a bit of stuff on the side, the laser work and a bit of digital design and some financial stuff. I actually have another job. I work at the University of Cape Town in the Faculty of Engineering in the Built Environment and I have a degree in Chemical Engineering. Now over these years we have been cutting and engraving different types of leather, veg tan leather and chrome tanned leather and, and other types as well and we'll talk about the different types uh, in another video that we'll do. But I started to see different posts in various forums uh, about the dangers of chrome tanned leather and how you shouldn't engrave or cut chrome tanned leather. One of them was Ryan James of Little King Goods. He made a great video comparing a laser machine to a, a clicker press. And in that video, he mentions that uh, chrome tanned leather should not be cut or engraved, it releases toxic gas, and he only used veg tan leather. And there are a couple of others, uh, I mentioned, sort of mentioned them at the beginning of the video. Um, Dallas Makers Space, they say, they have a table of materials that you can and you can't engrave on, and at the bottom of the table is materials you should never engrave or never cut, and they include their chrome tan leather, the reason being because it emits toxic chemicals, toxic gases according to them and they say that it releases freaky chemicals like chromium that are used in the, in the tanning process. Another um, uh, forum, Glowforge community, they say it releases cyanide gas which is highly poisonous and potentially lethal. So given these comments and a bit of knowledge of chemistry that I have, of course I don't want to do anything dangerous and I haven't been feeling any adverse effects, I'm still alive yet. So I thought I'd do some research and uh, what I found out was really interesting and I thought I'd like to share it with you. Broadly speaking, there are three types of leather. Synthetic leather, chrome tanned leather and veg tanned leather. Now synthetic leather doesn't start with animal skin at all. There's some other substrate and then on top of that, polyurethane. Polyurethane is a plastic, it's really a family of polymer plastics and the problem with polyurethane is when you put it in a laser machine the laser raises the temperature of the plastic so that it ignites and it burns. Chemically speaking it means it combusts, it, it uh, combines with oxygen and when polyurethane combines with oxygen it produces carbon monoxide which is poisonous and if it contains, if the polyurethane contains nitrogen then it releases hydrogen cyanide which is also poisonous, it's toxic. Okay, it releases large quantities of that. So you don't want to be breathing that in. Okay, it's not gonna be good for you. And that's why I do not laser engrave or cut uh, synthetic leather. Uh, leatherette is similar, it also has a substrate, but leatherette contains softened polyvinyl chloride, which means when you combust it, then it produces uh, hydrogen chloride, which is really just gaseous hydrochloric acid, so when you breathe in that, it combines with, with water and it can burn your mucous membrane, and your throat, etc. Also not good stuff. Okay, so any form of synthetic leather, don't laser engrave or cut that. Okay. Then there is veg tan leather. 
Best tan leather uses vegetable tannins that are found in plant material or in the bark of trees and that is then used to preserve the animal skin. Okay, so those tannins are, um, are molecules that combine together and they stiffen the leather and they preserve the leather. Uh, and that's the tanning, that's the tanning process, they preserve the leather. And obviously, because it's plant-based, then there's no problem with laser engraving or laser cutting veg tan leather. All you'll be doing is you'll be burning the animal skin. It can release a, maybe a smell that's not so great. And if there's incomplete combustion, then you're gonna get a little bit of carbon residue, okay? That soot, that black stuff that you see on the leather, and you just wipe that away. There's no problem at all. Yes, yeah, so I think that's accepted. Synthetic leather is not good. Uh, Vest tan leather is fine. What about chrome tan leather? Now, chrome tan leather, instead of using vegetable tannins, then they use mineral tannins. Okay, chrome tan leather, the uh, chrome tanning process is responsible for the production of 90% of all leather around the world. It is widely used, it is cheap, and it is faster than veg tan leather, veg tanning process. Okay. Um, now, now, it's not the metal chromium that does the tanning, okay? It's actually metal salts, so it's the salts of chromium that are used in the tanning process. And to illustrate the difference between the metal and the salt, let me just use an example of table salt, okay? Table salt is sodium chloride, and that is made up of sodium, which is a very reactive metal. It actually spontaneously combusts in water and air, and chlorine. Okay, chlorine gas, also known as mustard gas, is poisonous and was used in World War I in trench warfare. Now, when you combine these two, you know, uh, volatile and dangerous and poisonous gas, you actually get harmless table salt, which we put on our food every day. Okay, so there's a difference between the metal and the salt. Okay, so I can't say because, you know, uh, sodium chloride contains sodium that it's dangerous or contains freaky chemicals like sodium. Okay, it takes on different properties as the salt. Okay, when it comes to chromium, uh, chrome metal, chromium metal is harmless. Okay, it's used to chrome plate things. It's a metal that doesn't oxidize easily, which means that it retains a nice shiny finish, and that's why it's often used in chrome plating. Well, that's why it is the metal for chrome plating. Okay, All right. when it comes to the salts of chromium, you get a number of different salts, but we'll deal with really two different salts or two different what we call ionic states, okay? So when your, um, your chrome loses electrons, then it becomes different ions of chromium and you get chromium six plus and chromium three plus, okay? Now, chromium six plus is known to be a carcinogen, which means that it is cancer causing. Uh, you know, it's been proven if you are in an environment where there are high concentrations of chromium dust, chromium six plus dust in the air and you breathe it in over a period of time, the chances are you will develop lung cancer. Okay, so it is not good stuff and chromium six plus used to be used in the past. It used to be used in the tanning process. The salts that we used, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's, it's sodium dichromate that was used in the tanning process. Uh, and they did pick up uh, chrome ulcers because the, the hexavalent chromium can attack the skin and there were incidents of cancer as well. Okay, there's some discussion around that because uh, and I'll upload the, the, the reference as well. It's not yet proven that ingesting hexavalent chromium, you know, that swallowing it or eating it, does give you cancer, but we are sure that breathing it in uh, into the lungs and the respiratory system, we are sure that there's a link there to cancer. Okay, so um, for that reason, that's why hexavalent chromium is no longer used in the tanning process, but what is used is trivalent chromium, okay? So chromium 3 plus. Now trivalent chromium is actually essential to the human diet. We need to take it in, our bodies don't produce it, so we need to take it in in our diet and of course, it's, in other words, it's essential for our nutrition and our bodily processes, and so it is harmless, okay? Now, because trivalent chromium is used today in the tanning process, that is why uh, there is no problem for you to use chrome tanned leather. I mean, anyone that deals with or trades or makes stuff with, with leather, they use mainly chrome tanned leather, and there are no side effects, no after effects there. There's no problem at all.
Okay? The question is now, if you laser cut chrome tanned leather, can it change the trivalent chromium to become hexavalent chromium and, uh, and can that release noxic, uh, noxious chemicals? Noxic chemicals? The answer is no. Okay? Study has been done uh, where they subjected chrome tanned leather to laser pulses and they analyzed the you know, number of pulses, two or three or four, and they analyzed the product. What they found was that the level of carbon in the leather was raised, but the level of hexavalent chromium was not raised at all. And the reason for that is not difficult to understand. It's because once again, you are burning the leather with your laser. And when there's incomplete combustion, then you're gonna get a buildup of carbon, a buildup of soot. And that is why you're gonna get that layer of black stuff that you have to wipe away after you've done the laser engraving. Okay, I'll read the conclusion they have here in this paper. The obtained results revealed that the applied CO2 laser engraving did not change the amount of hexavalent chromium and the tested engraved leather completely meets the requirements of EU regulations. Okay, now let me just explain in a little more detail. Okay, the reaction to produce hexavalent chromium from trivalent chromium is a redox reaction. Okay? And so that CR3+, plus, you have to then lose electrons and it becomes CR6+. Plus. And that does take place in acidic conditions. And there is a small conversion of trivalent chromium to hexavalent chromium in any tanning process, which is going to leave some trace amounts of hexavalent chromium in the leather. Okay, you heard now when I was reading about EU regulations. So the EU has, has mandated or legislated now that leather products coming to the EU can't have more than three parts per million. Okay, three milligrams per kilogram of leather. Okay, so below that, the EU, which is which is really stringent, there's no um, limit here in South Africa. I think in the US, there's also no limit. Okay, so it's very stringent. Um, but you can see that even at, at three parts per million or lower, then the EU says there's no problem for of hexavalent chromium content there. Incidentally, fish contains two parts per million hexavalent chromium, and uh, you know, we, don't, we don't break out in ulcers when we eat fish, okay? Uh, it's, it's just one of those things that it's one of those trace elements which is around, and there's actually no, uh, no harm at all with those, okay? Um, so, in conclusion, what is happening is that people are confusing chrome tanned leather with synthetic leather. That's one of the confusions, and uh, on a website, Another example, a website called All3DP, then they say never use laser cutters on synthetic leather and chrome tanned leather as they contain chemicals capable of producing toxic fumes when burned. Okay, that is simply misinformation. As I did say now, when you um, laser engrave or laser cut polyurethane or polyvinyl chloride, there's a chemical reaction and it does release toxic fumes. But the same is not true for chrome tanned leather. If it comes, uh, you know, in a country like South Africa and, and other countries, I'm sure the US, European Union, and other countries where there's proper legislation in place, it's well regulated, you have reputable tanneries, they won't be giving you leather with high values of hexavalent chromium. It's going to be trivalent chromium that is in the leather. When you put it in the laser machine, that laser does not change the trivalent chromium to hexavalent chromium. Okay, so the levels remain the same. All it does is it just combusts the leather and you're gonna get a bit of carbon there. Okay, so I think people are maybe wanting to be overly cautious, all right? But chemically speaking, when you look at the facts, there's actually no problem at all to engrave or cut a chrome tan leather. I hope that has been interesting and useful. I'd be interested to hear your comments. If you have any, please send them through. Happy to provide the sources as well. And as I said, we're gonna be doing a few more videos also for Max Laser. All right, all the best from Kubica Chur. Keep well, stay safe. Adios.